HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, you'll find out why a group of Hopkinton police and firefighters did push-ups to raise awareness. Owner of Angel's Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, has some great tips on selecting firewood. Courtney will tell you about upcoming HCAM programming with the HCAM Insider and will get you up to date with Hiller Sports. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. Hello. I'm Terry Malisi, and you may recognize me from my show, The Gathering. The Gathering is a cooking show filmed in my home, my kitchen, usually on a Saturday before a dinner party that evening. You're going to have to muster up all of your courage for tonight's gathering, because tonight's gathering is a haunted gathering. Currently airing on HCAM and available on our YouTube channel, you can view The Gathering, a haunted gathering, as Terry Malisi makes some scrumptious Halloween-themed snacks. Years ago, the kids would go trick-or-treating, and after, they would all come back to my house, and they'd play downstairs while the parents, while the costumed parents, would have a party of their own upstairs. So the kids grew, and the parties fell off by the wayside, and I thought it would be nice to bring them back, and that's what it is. So a lot of the same parents are in the neighborhood and they came and um, it was a cocktail party. So we had a lot of spooky appetizers and the house was really decked out um, spookily and uh, it was a great time. And here you have it, bloody fingers served with a side of blood. I made a lot of appetizers such as a coffin dip, creepy finger dip, bloody meat pieces, just a lot of different things, all with the Halloween theme. We had a couple of spooky punches too. So why don't you stop on by, check out when the show's playing, and join us, and you'll learn how to share great food with people that you care about. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us for another episode of The Gathering. And remember, with Trick or Treat, you always have a choice. Here's to HCAM. The Michael is now Respite Center is in their 19th year of operation and hosted their 19th annual Michael's Run. I am the fa one of the founders, one of the two founders of the Respite Center, and um, I am one of the directors um, at the Respite Center. And I'm also Michael's mom. The afternoon featured the 5K as well as many activities for all ages. Today was our 19th annual Michael's Run and it is, um, has a lot of value in many different ways. One is the, it honors my son Michael who passed away when he was 10 years old, who the Respite Center is named after. It's also a race that our Respite Center um, individuals train for all summer long. So they get their trophies for months of worth of work. Um, it's also a wonderful community event. Um, as you can see, the Hopkinton um, football team comes out and they walk with and run with our runners. So it's a, it's a real event of inclusion and um, just a happy event. The annual Michael's Run received big support from the community once again. Oh, today went just wonderfully well. It was, the weather was gorgeous, the colors are beautiful. Um, we had a nice turnout, the Hopkinton Running Club did all the registrations for us. It just could not have been a better day. All right, and is there uh, any more events uh, coming up for the res respite, respite Center? center? Um, our next big events come um, at marathon time. So we're, we're kind of quiet from now through marathon time, but um, the Boston Marathon's our biggest fundraising event of the year. 
All right, excellent. And uh, if someone wanted to learn more about the uh, Respite Center, where could they go? You can go online to hopkintonrespite.com and visit our website, and all the information is on there. The 22 Kill organization started in 2013 and works across the nation to raise awareness for veterans facing mental health issues. This week at the Hopkinton Police Station, members of the Hopkinton Police and Fire Department did 22 push-ups plus one more to honor the estimated 22 veterans a year that commit suicide and one more for active duty military that take their lives. The organization hopes to reach 22 million push-ups nationwide. Uh, today, myself and uh, my friend Dave Fall and Shannon Jackman put together uh, 22 push-ups to honor our military men and women that ultimately take their lives each and every day to suicide. Uh, we also pushed one, we call it the plus one, for active duty military men and women that also ultimately take their lives um, every day. So. The 22 plus one is 22 veterans each and every day that commit suicide due to the physical and psychological wounds of war and or serving in the military. Plus one is active duty. <laughs> All right, so we are here live with the Hopkinton Police and Fire Department getting ready to get down to do 22 push-ups plus one for active duty military men and women. So these men and women are gonna join Dave Fall and myself to do 22 plus one. Real quick, can we say hi to Chief Lee, the Hopkinton Police Department. Sir, thank you very much for having us out here today. The Hopkinton Police and much. Fire Department. And we have an Ashland firefighter down here also. All right, so let's have everybody get down. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. And exercise. One, one two, two, three. Honestly, I just started doing some push-ups. Um, went live on Facebook, and uh, I hooked up with uh, Miss Vivarius there, and. We just been going ever since then, and then we decided to do the uh, stride and ride relay together. So that's how we ended up, just through coincidence, I guess you could say. All right. So is it a regular? So it's safe to say on a regular basis you're going from station to station, town to town. Uh, yes, sir. I try to make sure I can get where I can to raise as much awareness as possible. I was down in Cabo last year doing at a fire department in Cabo, St. Lucas. So yeah, I've been traveling around trying to do it and raise as much awareness as possible. Okay. And I noticed that you get the police and fire involved. Why do you involve police and fire? Um, it's very important to uh, bridge that gap because these men and women also serve on those thin lines. And so Shana had reached out to me and asked if we would come out here and do 22 push-ups. And uh, many people don't may or may not know that we actually lose two to three police officers every week to suicide and two uh, firefighters, paramedics to suicide as well every week. So that's another five. And... Uh, you know, many of these men and women are also veterans, so it's very important because when these veterans serve, um, when they come home, they want to continue that service to the people and to our country. So ultimately, they become uh, firefighters, police officers, EMS, paramedics, uh, dispatchers even, and they get in that line and they do something that's greater than themselves. They give so much, so, so selflessly. So we get out here, we push for our veterans, but when we're pushing for our veterans, we're pushing for our first responders and civilians struggling so to give people that hope that so many people need nowadays. I think so. All right, what else is coming up? Uh, we actually um, have a big event. It's going to be honoring our military men and women. Um, October 7th through the 14th, 2017, we're doing an event called Stride and Ride Relay, which is uh, the significance of October 7, 2001 is because uh, that was when our men and women were deployed after 9-11. So we're uh, creating this event called Stride and Ride Relay, um, which will kick off on October 7, 2017. We will relay to every single 9-11 um, location where 9-11 occurred to pay um, our respects to the 2,977 victims, give our thanks to the first responders who stepped up that very faithful day and continued to step up until this day, 
but it is to honor and remember our military men and women who've paid the ultimate sacrifice and those that are still serving and sacrificing uh, 15 years later and obviously in 2017 it'll be 16 years later and so uh, that's what Stride and Ride really is about. It's about giving thanks to those men and women that are still serving and really all that have served past, present and future and uh, to give our thanks to first responders and never forget get the victims of 9-11. What made you decide to bring this to Hockey? Well, my good friend Heather was posting doing 22 push-ups at the starting line and her and I share the same passion to give back to our veterans and bringing awareness to not often spoken about or talked about veteran suicide. It also happens in law enforcement and also in the fire departments for everything that they see every day. So when I told, found out she was only just down the street, I was like, you need to come over here. And she's like, yeah, I would love to, but I would love the police and fire to be part of it. So I was like, let me talk to my chief. Let's get this going. So in a matter of just two weeks, because I didn't want to wait too long. I just wanted to get it done and get everyone involved and not hesitate. And so the chief, I sent a message to him and, and told him all about the program and the organization, what they do and, and the cause. And he was like, absolutely. He didn't hesitate. He wrote right back and it wasn't even on ours. He was off duty and definitely responded quickly, like, let's do this. So um, we just, then I posted to everyone with the fire department and the police department and said, hey guys, this is an amazing cause. Let's let's kind of join in together and, and do 22 push-ups. Cause we have a lot of physically fit people, you know, so I'm like, you can do 22. So it's not too bad. For more information on 22 push-ups for vets and the 22 kill organization, head over to 22kill.com. Still to come on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with programming coming up on our channels with the HCAM Insider. Owner of Angels Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, will give you tips on selecting firewood for the winter. And we have the latest Hiller Sports update. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Do you have what it takes? make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. With the cold weather ahead, it is almost time to get the fireplace ready. Owner of Angels Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, had some tips on selecting the best quality firewood in the latest Tips from Angels. Hi, my name is Jeff Doherty and I'm from Angels Garden Center. Today I'm here to talk to you about firewood. Everyone is ordering firewood at this point because they're getting ready for winter. And what I'd like to give you is a few hints on what to look for when you order firewood. Firewood comes by the cord and a cord is measured by 128 cubic feet. This pile that's behind me represents a cord of firewood. What we have here is 16 inch cut and split and this is green. This is considered green because it was done within the past two months. We carry green, semi-season, and fully season. Fully season is anywhere from nine to 12 months of being cut and split and being able to dry out. If you'll see these two pieces that I've pulled out, you'll see that the wood is gray. So that's weathered a little bit. 
and has been seasoned for at least four months. The other way to tell firewood that's been seasoned is the ends because that's how firewood dries, is from the ends of the wood. And if you see a dark piece of wood like that, that means that that's been seasoned. If it looks clean, it's just been cut. If the wood smells acidic, it's just been cut. So those are the things that we like to look for. We also carry firewood in a pallet. So that pallet is considered four feet by 40 inches by three and a half feet high. So that's actually a third of a cord. People like that because it's the right size, the pieces aren't too big, everything in there is seasoned, it's all a good mix of hardwoods, and it's ready to burn. We can deliver that to your driveway. We also can deliver in half cord increments or full cord. And as I said earlier, this pile represents a full cord. The other way that you can measure it is we have a rack set up to my left and that rack is eight feet long, it's four feet high, and a piece of wood that's 16 to 18 inches is considered 1.4 feet. So if you took three of those, you would have more than a cord or one of those increments, eight by four by 1.4, would give you a, a face cord or a half a face cord. But actually when you do the math, it comes out to 2.85, so that's why I said three of those racks. And people like setting it up on a rack so that the wood doesn't touch the ground and pick up the moisture. It's also a good idea to stack your wood so that it's getting some sun. You want to put a tarp over the top, but you want the ends to be exposed to the air on either side. So I always tell people, try and stack it somewhere where it's going to get the sun. And don't put it 500 feet away from your house, because when the snow is three feet deep and you got to make a path to get there, it really becomes a cumbersome task. So hopefully those hints will help you when you're ordering firewood. And please feel free to stop by Angels Garden Center anytime and we'll be happy to help you out with any of your questions on firewood. Thank you. Be on the lookout for more great tips from Angels with Jeff Doherty in the coming weeks on HCAM News. Believe it or not, the fall sports season is entering the final weeks and many Hillers teams are making a final push for the postseason. Here are the latest happenings in Hillers sports. On Friday, October 14th, the Hillers volleyball team sported pink jerseys as they hosted Bellingham in the annual Dig Pink matchup to support the Side Out Foundation and the fight against breast cancer. Peyton Weber scored the 24th Hillers point off the serve as the Hillers took the first set 25 to 9. In the second set, a nice defensive hit by Amanda Gilbert helps the Hillers add their 19th point and take the 19 to 4 lead. They never look back as they take the frame 25 to 5. In the third set, freshman Peyton Weber strikes again as she gets a good back hit to set up Rachel Zale to make it 24 to 11 Hillers in the third set. Hillers followed up with a point after to take the set and sweep the match. That was the Hillers' seventh sweep in a row. They have since increased it to eight sweeps in a row as they swept Westwood on Wednesday, October 19th to improve to 13 and one overall. The playoff bound Hillers have five matches left during the regular season. One and four Hillers football looking for a big win against four and one Bellingham. Connor Hebert had the first Hillers touchdown and Isaac Stillwell followed up with a second plus a pair of two point conversions made it 16 to nothing Hillers heading into the second quarter. After Bellingham struck back with a touchdown and a two point conversion of their own, the Hillers responded shortly after with a big drive. Connor Hebert coming out of the three back set scored his second touchdown of the game. 
24-8, Hillers at the half. The rushing attack continued in the third quarter. Isaac Stillwell rushes in for his second touchdown, and it was 31-8, Hillers following the extra point. Nick Stanley also hauled in a nice 40-yard touchdown reception from Jimmy Adams as the Hillers had no problem taking the victory 45-14. Hebert and Stillwell combined for over 250 yards rushing and had two touchdowns apiece as the Hillers took down Bellingham 45-14. Hillers are now 2-4 on the season with a chance to slip into the playoffs. Throwing for the Hillers. Fernando on the throw into Paleco. Top of the circle, good leg there, and that's a goal. McCallum Lind on the second goal for the Hillers. Hillers' domination over Bellingham continued on the soccer field. The Hillers boys took down a young Bellingham team easily. Maleko with the shot and the goal. Hillers boys took care of Bellingham by an 8-0 final. They put up four goals in each half. The victory puts the Hillers within five points of the postseason. With three games left to play, the Hillers will need to at least tie and win two of the final three games of the season to make the playoffs. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, for the latest in Hillers sports and our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hcamtv, for the latest hcam sports broadcasts. It is a very busy October on the HCAM channels. Courtney Taylor is standing by to tell you all about it with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, October 22nd at 1.30 p.m., it's football versus Bellingham. And at 3.30 p.m., it's boys soccer versus Bellingham. On Tuesday, October 25th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, October 26th at 6.30 p.m., the volleyball game against Norton will air live on HCAM Ed. On Thursday, October 27th at 6.30 p.m., Margie Wigan talks to community members about being hardworking and discusses the importance of hard work on a new Character Matters. We're not corporate. It's not nine to five. It is what it is. It is when it is. You've got to do it. You've got to try to always stay positive and happy. Right. Yeah, Thank that's, you. That's, yeah, that's in a nutshell. On Sunday, October 30th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from October 24th will air. And if you want to know about everything we do here at HCAM, head on over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can subscribe to our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about all of the activities taking place in town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view details about the upcoming elementary school groundbreaking and view the latest Hiller Sports happenings, plus much more. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and as always, thank you for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com.